Number one strategy in making a narcissist fear you is to set boundaries. Narcissists love overstepping boundaries. They love manipulating people. They love guilt tripping their victims into doing things they are not comfortable with. A narcissist will manipulate you, will guilt trip you to do what you are not comfortable doing. Therefore, if you want to make a narcissist to fear you, you need to set boundaries. And you need to communicate those boundaries. You need to enforce those boundaries. When you establish boundaries, when you set those boundaries up, what you're communicating to the narcissist is that you are not going to tolerate their behavior. Now, if you want to make your narcissist fear you, number two, be assertive. When you're assertive, it means you're standing up for yourself. You're standing up for what you believe in. And that you're not going to allow the narcissist to play games with you. Be assertive when you are trying to deal with a narcissist. When you are handling a narcissist. One way is to say no to a narcissist. It's very important. Say no. When they try to manipulate you, to dominate the situation, control conversations, play those mind games, be assertive by saying no to them. By doing that, you make them fear you. Number three way of making a narcissist fear you is don't feed their ego. What I mean is that don't give any attention to the narcissist. They'll try to provoke you to react. They'll want to make you angry so that you can react. But don't react. Be cool, calm, and collected. Don't forget that narcissists thrive on attention. They don't care if the attention is negative or positive. So don't give them any attention. Don't react. Remember, the narcissist wants to be the center of attention all the time. And they will do anything to get it. They don't care if the attention is positive or negative. They need attention. So don't feed the narcissist ego. Don't give them attention. Don't praise them. Don't even acknowledge them. Don't recognize them. That way you make them fear you. Don't praise them. They crave that. Instead of doing that, focus on your own needs. Focus on your own interests. Focus on your well-being, on yourself, on your good health. Number four way to make a narcissist fear you is to use humor. Humor is one powerful way to make a narcissist fear you. It diffuses test situations and it makes the narcissist look stupid and silly. This way, the narcissist will fear you. Again, Stay cool, calm, and collected all the time to make the narcissist fear you. Remember, when you, when you are calm, the narcissist is confused. Because they want you to get emotional. They want you to get angry. They want you to react. That way, the situation becomes worse. But if you want to take control of any situation, then be calm. And that way, you make the narcissist fear you. Number six way of making a narcissist fear you is to make the narcissist be responsible for their actions. Let them take responsibility for their actions. Let them be accountable because this is one of the things the narcissist hates. That's why they always blame shift things. That's why they always try to blame their victims. That's why they play, they play, they, they project on their victims. They love playing the victim. They make mistakes, then they blame you. They blame others for their bad behavior. So hold them accountable. Let them explain their actions. When you do that, you make the narcissist fear you because what you are communicating to them is that you are not going to tolerate their behavior. To make a narcissist fear you, be consistent. They will try to, over, to cross your boundaries, to break your boundaries, to push those buttons. But be consistent. What you are trying to communicate to the narcissist is that you are a serious person and you are not going to allow them to play games with you anymore. You are not going to allow them to break your boundaries. That way they will respect your boundaries and they will fear you so much. So if you want to make the narcissist fear you, keep your distance. Stay away from the narcissist. When you stay away from the narcissist, they cannot control you. They cannot play games on you because 
you have kept a distance. If you need to interact with the narcissist, then make sure you are sticking to the main business at hand. Keep the conversations very short and brief. Maintain the yes-no answers if possible. In short, go grey rock when you interact with the narcissist. You limit your interactions with them. That way you protect yourself from the narcissist negative behavior. Another way of, prote of, of making the narcissist fear you is to use positive reinforcement. When the narcissist behaves positively, you can praise them a little or give them the attention they need. And this might encourage them, encourage them to behave better. And it makes them fear losing that approval you've given them. So another way to make the narcissist fear you is don't take the bait. I've already said it in this video. The narcissist will provoke you to react. They know where to press. They know the buttons to push to force a negative reaction in you or even a positive reaction. So don't take the bait. Don't do it. Don't react. Always stay calm, cool and collected. That way you make the narcissist fear you. Because they, are, they want you to react and you're not reacting. They get confused. Another way of making the narcissist fear you is to, is to document their behavior. Have a journal. Have a notebook. Record all conversations that you have with the narcissist. Journal everything that you talk with the narcissist. When you document those behaviors, you're creating evidence that you can use to protect yourself. That way the narcissist fears you because they know you have records. You have evidence of their behavior. Another way to make a narcissist fear you is to seek support. Having a relationship with a narcissist is tough. It can be very difficult. It can be very draining. It is not a piece of cake. It is the worst nightmare. So you need a support system. When you're dealing with a narcissist. This support system will make the narcissist fear you. You need to seek support from trusted friends, from trusted loved ones, trusted relatives. You can also seek professional help. That way you become strong. And the narcissist fears you because they know you have a strong support system. This support system can provide you with a safe space to vent and gain perspective. This support system can give you the strength you need desperately to stand up to the narcissist and make them fear you. Another way to make the narcissist fear you is to use silence. Go silent on the narcissist. If possible, go no contact. This way you make the narcissist feel bad. They get scared. They feel pain. You hurt them because... They hate that silence you're giving them. Why dare you go silent on them? They, are, they love dominating conversations with you. So when you are silent, they become uncomfortable. They become confused. So don't, the best way to make the narcissist fear you is to be silent. Go silent on them. Go no contact. Disappear. Ghost them. This way, they get scared. They fear you terribly. Another way to make the narcissist fear you is to walk away. Walk away. There is power in walking away from the narcissist. It is difficult to do. But sometimes you need to walk away from the narcissist to protect yourself. When you walk away from the narcissist, you are sending a strong message that their behavior is unacceptable. It makes them fear losing you. And that way they might change their behavior. So another way of making the narcissist fear you is to focus on yourself. Focus on your well-being. Practice self-care. Why? Because dealing with a narcissist is extremely stressful. It is very emotionally draining. It is very important that you practice self-care. To protect your well-being. To protect your mental health. To protect your emotional health. So, when you practice self-care, the narcissist fears you. And how do you practice this self-care? By working out, exercise, meditation. When you spend time with your support system, with your loved ones, 
So when you take care of yourself, it strengthens you. It builds resilience. And the narcissist will fear you that way. We know that being in a relationship with a narcissist is the worst nightmare. It is not a piece of cake. It is a tough job. It is a tough business. You will always be under stress. It is very stressful, very depressing, draining. So when you're dealing with a narcissist, someone who is egotistic, egocentric, self-centered, selfish, someone who is arrogant, who lacks empathy, who only focuses on their own needs, it's tough. A narcissist needs constant admiration, constant attention, constant praise, constant recognition. So when you want to go string, strong against a narcissist, you need to have certain strategies in place. You need to put certain strategies in your fingertips so that you can be strong when dealing with a narcissist. That way you'll be able to protect yourself from the narcissist toxic behavior. Because your health is very important. Your mental health is very important. Your emotional health matters. So number one way of being strong against a narcissist is to establish boundaries. Establish clear boundaries and communicate those boundaries assertively to the narcissist. What this does is that it sends a strong message to the narcissist that you won't tolerate their behavior. Number two way of going strong, of being strong against a narcissist, of, being, of staying strong against a narcissist, is not to engage with toxicity. What I mean is that the narcissist will try to provoke you in all ways to react. They need some negative or meant or positive reaction from you. They don't care. What they need is they want you to react. They'll try to push your buttons. The secret here is to refuse to engage with the narcissist's behavior. When they provoke you, don't react. Go grey rock. Be dull. Be boring. Like the grey rock. Remain calm. Remain cool. Remain composed. Be collected. When they don't get any reaction from you, the narcissist cannot defeat you. You'll be strong against them. The other way of Staying strong against a narcissist is to protect your mental health. How do you protect your mental health? By engaging in activities that promote your mental and emotional well-being. Do a lot of exercises. Do a lot of meditation. Spend a lot of time with your strong support system. That is trusted friends, trusted family members, trusted loved ones. This way, you safeguard your mental health. So how do you stay, stay strong against a narcissist? Number four, you need to recognize the signs. You need to understand who a narcissist is. You need to understand the narcissist's manipulative strategies. You need to know these signs so that you can stay strong against the narcissist. So one trick is to record the narcissist's behavior. Have a journal, have a notebook, a pen every time the narcissist behaves in a, in a narcissistic manner. Keep recording. Keep taking notes. If they abuse you, record that abusive language. They'll try to manipulate you. Recognize those signs and record them. Note them down. They'll try to gaslight you. Note the, those signs down. This will be evidence to you to protect yourself. Number five way of staying strong against a narcissist is to talk to others. Have a strong support system. Have people you can talk to. Don't stay in isolation. Talk to friends. Talk to family members. Talk to a therapist about your experiences. They will give you some listening ear. They'll give you validation. They'll give you guidance. They'll give you some advice. They'll be there to encourage you, to give you hope. To stay strong against a narcissist, you need to also utilize humor. Humor will always diffuse tense situations and make the narcissist look looks and feel silly. So this is one effective way to take back control and make the narcissist fear you. So to stay strong against a narcissist, you also need to stay cool, calm and collected. Remember, these people can be very unpredictable. They can do anything. 
So, always stay calm. Be composed to maintain your power and control the situation. Again, to stay strong against the narcissist, always be open to living. If the narcissist becomes too much, if they become unbearable, then always be prepared to leave that situation. Always be prepared to leave that relationship. It, it is not easy. It is challenging. But it is very important to prioritize your own well-being. It is very important to prioritize yourself. To stay strong against a narcissist, hold them accountable. Let them be responsible for their actions. Let them explain their negative their behavior. Don't let them get away with it. So to stay strong against a narcissist, limit interactions with them. Only interact with the narcissist when necessary. This is to protect yourself, to make sure your mental and emotional health is, is, is intact, is safe. Because dealing with a narcissist is not easy. These are people who always try to manipulate you. These are people who always try to control you. They want to hurt you, to destroy you. So, limit any interactions with them. Set boundaries in practice self-care. Seek support. That way, you can stay strong and protect yourself from the narcissist toxic behavior. You need and you deserve to be treated well, to be treated with respect, to be treated with kindness. And you have that power to make these things happen. Ignore the narcissist to stay strong against them. Don't let them affect you. Don't let them control you. Let them, let them not manipulate you. Go no contact if possible. And when I mean no contact, I mean zero contact. No phone calls. No social media interactions with the narcissist in any way. Ghost them if you can. Disappear. That way you will stay strong against this narcissist. How can they control you? How can they manipulate you if they can't reach you? Remember, narcissists are often motivated by a deep fear of being exposed or losing control. They are scared that someone might expose them and see their true nature and see who they really are. That they are not special, that they are not unique, that they are not, they're not important, they are not more important than others. And that's what the narcissist is scared of most. They fear being criticized. They fear being rejected. They fear being abandoned. So the narcissist will do everything. And they will go to any extent to avoid these things that will hurt them. So set boundaries. Hold the narcissist accountable. Refuse to engage them in their toxic behavior. That way you make the narcissist fear you. You become strong against the narcissist and you protect yourself from their negative influence. You can take control of your life. You can build healthy relationships. Never forget that. Narcissists they are capable of feeling scared. They are capable of feeling threatened. And when they know you are on to them, when a narcissist is exposed, they are scared. Remember, the narcissist's behavior is motivated by a deep fear of losing control or being exposed. So they'll go to great lengths to avoid feeling vulnerable. So when they realize you have exposed them, they will lash out at you. They'll project their insecurities onto others or onto you. They'll manipulate situations to maintain their sense of power. So the best way to protect yourself from a narcissist's toxic behavior is to set boundaries. Is to stay calm. It is to, be cool, to stay cool, to be composed, to, be coll to stay collected. Focus on your well-being. Prioritize your own well-being. Put yourself first. Dealing with a narcissist is very challenging. So, using all these strategies, they will protect you. Use all these strategies to protect yourself and be strong against the narcissist. It will make the narcissist fear you. So, if you need healthy relationships, if you need to establish healthy relationships, try to set boundaries. Be assertive. 
and hold the narcissist accountable. That way, you stay strong against the narcissist. You make them fear you. Remember to always re uh, seek your support system. Reach out to your support system and seek support. Practice self-care. And don't forget to walk away if necessary. This way you'll be able to be a happy person and you'll have a healthier life. One thing that the narcissist hate the most is when you don't give them the admiration and attention they deserve. The admiration and attention they need and require. Narcissists have this insatiable need for admiration and attention from others. They seek constant validation to validate their fragile self-esteem. They seek constant admiration, constant praise, constant attention. When you deprive the narcissist of this attention, of this admiration, then they feel a sense of worthlessness and they respond in various ways to regain the spotlight. They begin engaging in attention-seeking behaviors. They exaggerate stories. They try to seek sympathy. They play victim. They become, they swing into narcissistic rage. You know, they become very irritable. They become very manipulative to get attention back to themselves. So the other thing that you do that narcissists hate the most is criticism and rejection. When you criticize a narcissist, they hate it. Narcissists hate to be criticized and they hate to be rejected. If there is one thing the narcissists hate the most is when you prove them wrong, when you reject them. It is an attack to them because they believe they are perfect. They have this idealized self-image. So when you criticize or reject a narcissist, it triggers these intense emotional reactions. They become defensive. They become angry. They, they hit back. They become, they, 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 they hate you for it. This inability of narcissists to accept constructive criticism hinders their personal growth and it makes them have, having, it makes them find it very difficult to have healthy relationships or long lasting relationships because this inability of narcissists to accept criticism makes them have constant conflicts in their relationships. When you reject a narcissist, they cannot take it. They will hate you for it. The other thing that you do that narcissists hate the most is you setting boundaries. Narcissists hate boundaries because they want to control you. They feel entitled to control and dominate, dominate others. They want to dominate everything about you. They want to dominate how you think, what you do, your, your environment. Everything around you, your personal space included. They want to assert their dominance over you. So when you set boundaries, the narcissist hates you. They hate when you establish and maintain boundaries. They will resist and they will challenge any attempts to limit their control over you. The other thing that the narcissist hates the most is when you ignore them. When you reject them. When you ignore them, they feel they are irrelevant. They want to be the center of attention. So how, how dare you ignore them? When you ignore them, they feel insignificant. Then they will react with anger, jealousy. They will try to engage in attention-seeking behaviors to regain their perceived rightful place as the focal point. The other thing that narcissists hate is when you are successful, and when you make it in life, when you achieve success, when you progress, they hate that. Narcissists hate any success that you have because they believe they are the ones who should be successful. They will belittle or undermine the achievements that you, you, you have. They are very envious and jealous people. They want to feel superior than you. So any success that you have, any achievement that you have, they will hate it. And they'll want to pull you back, pull you down. They'll want to pull you behind. They'll want to put you down. Narcissists will hate when you expose them. When you expose them for being narcissists. They fear being exposed. 
they fear being seen as vulnerable or having mistakes because they want to be seen as perfect and superior so when you expose the narcissist when you unmask them when you expose that fake image that they have portrayed then they will hate you for it they will gaslight you they'll blame you they'll project their faults onto those around them they never accept mistakes they never accept to be on the wrong so the last thing that narcissist says the most the number five thing the narcissist says the most is when you show empathy and emotional connection one thing about narcissists they lack empathy they are incapable of forming genuine relationships healthy relationships with people because they lack empathy they cannot connect with others emotionally so they find it challenging to understand or relate to the emotions of others they are selfish self-absorbed individuals and this self-absorption prevents the narcissist from genuinely connecting with others on an emotional level now that's why relationships with the narcissist are transactional they are superficial there's lack of true emotional intimacy in those relationships and that's why narcissists are very manipulative they try to exploit others you know for their own selfish gain it's always about me 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 with the narcissist they only care about themselves it is their way or the highway they exploit they, if after using you they discard you you know they are very arrogant people when you try to build emotional connection with them they will hate you for it because it's simply very difficult almost impossible for them to have that emotional connection with them to them it's like an attack it's like you are you want to use them you want to control them they feel bad when you're trying to build that emotional connection with them and that's why it said the narcissist hurts those closest to them the most to make the narcissist fear you and one thing is to establish boundaries narcissists hate personal boundaries they find them threatening they see those boundaries as a challenge to their controlling behavior so be clear be direct be consistent about your boundaries establish those boundaries and enforce them the boundaries are there to protect you from the narcissist communicate to the narcissist what is acceptable and what is an acceptable behavior for you and when you communicate communicate assertively and when the narcissist tries to cross those boundaries make sure consequences are in place reassert those boundaries setting boundaries is important for your mental health so to make the narcissist fear you quickly in a minute set those boundaries establish boundaries and also put consequences in, consequences in place number two is to be assertive i'm not talking about being aggressive but be assertive when dealing with an narcissist to make them fear you in a minute when you stand up for yourself it's important to know that you need to be assertive stand up for yourself without being aggressive because the narcissist wants a reaction from you when they see that you're aggressive they are happy they'll use it against you so be assertive speak your truth firmly but calmly in a composed manner tell the narcissist what your expectations are express your needs without attacking the narcissist or blaming them in any way when you're calm collected composed the narcissist is scared they get frightened because they want you to react they'll push buttons to get you to react negatively they want to provoke you to react so that they can get narcissistic supply but don't give them that satisfaction aggressive reactions can always con uh, escalate conflicts it can always, always provide the narcissist with that attention they desire from you so be assertive but in a calm manner to to disengage the narcissist's power of manipulating and controlling the situation 
another way to make a narcissist fear you in a minute quickly is to focus on yourself focus on your self care prioritize your self care when the narcissist sees you're taking good care of yourself when they see that you've put yourself first they'll be scared they'll fear you so have some regular exercise balance have a balanced diet have sufficient sleep engage in activities that promote stress reduction do meditation so when you have a robust self care regimen you bolster your resilience against the narcissist manipulative tactics you also enhance your mental health your emotional health your well being in short you boost your personal health you boost your self esteem your self confidence your sense of self worth you build resilience you create a conducive environment that challenges the narcissist's power over you that way they'll fear you another way another way of making the narcissist fear you is to challenge their ego they'll fear you in a minute narcissists they have inflated egos they have this sense of of superiority and they need constant admiration constant recognition constant praise attention acknowledgement validation so if you need the narcissist to fear you challenge their ego don't give them what they need don't give them the attention they desire don't give them that admiration they need they think they're special they think they're unique deny them that challenge them challenge them that they are not important because they think they are more important than others when you're having a conversation with them you can respectfully disagree with their point of view this way you are showing them that you're not easily swayed by their opinion and that you have a mind of your own remember no reaction is the best reaction they need attention don't give them the attention they need that is narcissistic supply to them so when they provoke you to react don't react be calm that way you're showing them that their tactics are not affecting you and this way you are disrupting their control over your emotions the narcissist will try to manipulate you into a situation that serves their interest at your expense so calmly and firmly decline always try to remain composed cool calm collected stay emotionally detached this will prevent the narcissist from manipulating your feelings always go gray rock be dull be boring when you having conversation with the narcissist maintain those yes no answers one word answers this way they are not able to manipulate your feelings this needs a lot of practice so that the narcissist cannot play games with you when you withhold your reaction when you don't react when the narcissist provokes you it makes the narcissist feel confused disoriented they panic and they will realize they are losing grip over you this is one way of getting control back over your emotional landscape it is a way of not allowing the narcissist to manipulate you another way is to maintain your independence narcissists love controlling the decisions and actions of others so maintain your independence they'll feel scared they'll feel threatened because they're losing control over you so invest in yourself pursue your interests and your hobbies develop your skills and knowledge this enhances self confidence it reduces the impact of the narcissist attempts to belittle or to undermine you establish and maintain financial independence avoid depending on the narcissist financially if possible preserve your independence it reinforces your self worth and personal power and it makes it very difficult it makes it harder for the narcissist to control you to play mind games on you to manipulate you 
And this makes the narcissist fear you. Because they realize they cannot control you, they cannot manipulate you. To make a narcissist fear you in a minute, try to seek support. Have a strong support system. Surround yourself with supportive and understanding people when dealing with this narcissist. This helps you in many ways. It makes the narcissist fear you. They will be scared of you because they know you have people who can support you. So building a network of support provides you with multiple perspective and perspectives and validation for experiences. So it is very therapeutic also to speak with friends, trusted friends, trusted family members, because they always support you. And this is what the narcissist doesn't like. They'll fear you as a result. Again, to make a narcissist fear you, don't justify, don't argue, don't defend, and don't explain. When you do this, the narcissist fears you. When you're dealing with a narcissist, you'll, want, you'll find yourself trying to justify things, to argue, to defend, to explain. This leads to endless cycle of blames and criticism. So don't try to explain your feelings to a narcissist. When you refuse to engage in this game, the narcissist is not able to manipulate you. It makes them fear you. Because you are showing the narcissist that their usual tactics are ineffective. And the narcissist will panic and fear you. Again, to make the narcissist fear you in a minute, focus on self-affirmation. Keep reminding yourself about your worth and your value. The narcissist will try to undermine your self-esteem because they want to control you. So, have some self-affirmation regularly. Use positive affirmations that remind you of your strengths, of your achievements, and of your unique qualities. Constantly and regularly tell yourself that you're strong. Say, I'm strong. I'm capable. I'm powerful. I deserve respect. I deserve happiness. I deserve kindness. These affirmations, they act as antidote to the narcissist's negative influence over your sense of self-worth. And this alone scares the narcissist. They'll fear you. To make a narcissist fear you, you can also educate yourself about narcissism. Knowledge is power when dealing with a narcissist. When you know about narcissism, the narcissist fears you because they know you know their techniques. You know those manipulative techniques such as uh, gaslighting, lying, love bombing, devaluation, hoovering, discarding, blame shifting, all this gaslighting. Now the narcissist is scared of someone who is educated on narcissism. They'll fear you. Limit your exposure with a narcissist to make them fear you. When you limit exposure, it reduces the opportunities that the narcissist has to manipulate or hurt you. So, the less you are exposed to the narcissist's negativity, the less damage they can inflict on you. It decreases the narcissist's control over you. So, they'll panic, they'll fear you. So, the other way is to practice emotional detachment. Don't allow the narcissist's words or actions to dictate your emotional state. Always view the narcissist's behavior objectively. That way, they will not be able to control you. They will not be able to manipulate you and they will fear you. Again, to make the narcissist fear you in a minute, document everything. Maintain records of emails, text messages, any confrontational incidences or incidents that you've had with the narcissist with specific dates and details. This will help you. It makes the narcissist fear you. To make the narcissist fear you, stay true to your reality. Remember the narcissist tactics such as gaslighting, manipulation, hoovering, love bombing, projection, blame shifting. 
they are all these are designed to make you question your experience and perceptions and reality so regularly practice mindfulness such as meditation to enhance self awareness and intuition documenting and journaling is a powerful tool it helps you it allows you to document your experiences and feelings which can help you when you have doubts a narcissist will fear you when you don't share personal information don't share your weaknesses your fears your dreams and your past experiences the narcissist will fear you you diminish the narcissist uh manipulative tools to use on you when you don't expose your weaknesses when you don't reveal your personal information they get confused because they'll feel they're losing grip over you so stay focused on your goals because the narcissist will try to derail your focus on your personal goals from your personal goals to keep you under their influence they'll try to belittle your ambitions they'll create distractions they'll try to bring conflicts to divert your attention so maintain a strong focus on your aspirations don't allow the narcissist actions to confuse you or to sidetrack you recognize the narcissist projection practice mindfulness maintain a positive self image that way the narcissist will fear you and again seek professional professional help a professional can help you to navigate the complexities of narcissistic behavior and equip you with effective coping mechanisms thank you for watching this video so if you want the narcissist to fear you establish clear boundaries be assertive prioritize self care stay focused on your goals Show no reaction to their provocations. Maintain your independence. Seek support. Challenge the narcissist's ego. Have some positive self-affirmations. Educate yourself about narcissism. Remember, the narcissist is scared the most of losing control. They fear being exposed. They fear being seen as imperfect in the eyes of others. So, to make a narcissist panic, maintain your independence. Don't react to their provocations. Negatively or positively, don't react. Stay focused on your own goals. This protects you from the narcissist's control. And they will fear you and they will panic. Why would this kind of a person want you gone? It's not easy. Why would they not fight for you? Why would, they not, why would the narcissist not chase you? That is what we are dealing with in this video. Why the narcissist didn't, didn't chase you or fight for you? Number one reason. You broke up with the narcissist and they're not chasing you. They're not fighting for you. Number one is because you never flattered them. You're not flattering them. Narcissists love compliments. They love being praised. They love you telling them how, you, how much you're impressed by their professional achievements. They want you to praise how, the, their, their, how nice their outfit is. They want you to admire them. They want you to give them validation that they crave. And once you do that, they will want you back. They will want you so that you can keep complimenting them. They want you so that you can keep flatting them. You know. They want lots of validation. And that's why when you don't flatter the narcissist, they don't chase you. They don't fight for you. Number one, number two reason why the narcissist didn't chase you, why they're not fighting for you, is because you are not an active listener. When you are an active listener, the narcissist will chase you. They'll fight for you. The narcissist is not chasing you or fighting for you because they didn't feel like they were the center of attention when they were talking. You never listen to them actively. Narcissists want you to talk. They want to talk and they want you to listen actively. They want you to nod in agreement. They want you to give them eye contact. They want you to paraphrase what they are saying occasionally to show them that you are truly listening to them. 
The narcissist wants you. They want you to listen. As they keep talking and talking and talking again and again and again. They want you to summarize what you heard them talk. And they want you to acknowledge and validate them. They don't want you to interrupt them or cut them off while they talk. So if you want to contribute something, wait for the narcissist to pause. If you don't agree with what the narcissist is saying, just keep smiling and nodding. If they say something that is bothering you, then you have to think on how you're going to confront them maybe later on. Another reason why the narcissist is not chasing you or fighting for you is because you don't have confidence. They see that you, you don't have self-esteem. So, the narcissist does not see your self-esteem shining. So, the narcissist will not chase you. They want to chase someone who looks confident. Someone who is emotionally intelligent. They want that kind of a person so that they can, they can get what you have. They will work very hard to get close to you once they think that you have self-esteem, once they think your self-esteem is high. Once they think that you are superior, you are acting in a superior manner. Once they think that you are, you are confident. So the narcissist is not chasing you or fighting for you because they see that you have no confidence. The other reason why the narcissist didn't chase you or fight for you is because you never showed your unique skills. Demonstrate any talents that you have that the narcissist does not have. And they will fight for you. They will chase you. When you don't show off your unique skills, they get bored with you. Identify the gaps that the narcissist has. And portray that you are skilled, you are talented in those gaps. If the narcissist has a small circle, show them how much of a big circle you have. Tell them about your accomplishments. If they are a bad cook, show them the way you are a good cook. This way, they will fight for you. They will chase you. When they see that you don't have any unique skills, then they don't chase you. They don't fight for you. The other reason why the narcissist didn't chase you or fight for you is because you are not dressing to fit the narcissist's public image. Narcissists care so much about looking good. So, when they see you looking good, they will chase you, they'll fight for you. But when they see you dress miserably, then they will not chase you. Another reason why the narcissist didn't chase you or fight for you is because you never took an interest in their interests. If you never ask narcissist questions about their favorite topics and things that they enjoyed, they got bored with you and they we never did, and they decided not to chase you or fight for you. Make the narcissist feel wanted. Butter them up. Act super interested in what the narcissist is saying. They will want you. They will want to be around you. Now, the narcissist didn't chase you or fight for right, or fight for you because you never asked for their advice. If you want the narcissist to chase you or fight for you, ask for their advice. Seek guidance from them. That way they may, they will like you. They will enjoy giving advice to you. Because it will make them feel important and knowledgeable. They will feel confident to give advice on any topic. Even if they know nothing about it. The other reason why the narcissist, did, the narcissist didn't chase you or fight for you is because you never focused your attention on them. I mean, it's because you never focused your attention on other people. Sometimes you can play games on the narcissist by focusing your attention on other people. 
to make them a little get a little bit jealous because narcissists are very jealous and envious people once they see you giving some attention to other people they feel jealous and they'll want you back they'll want to fight for you the narcissist didn't chase you or fight for you because you never played hard to get you know if you play hard to get if you make yourself less available then the narcissist will want you they will chase you they'll fight for you again the narcissist didn't chase you or fight for you because you never put some distance between the two of you. Some narcissists, they'll chase you once they realize that you're ignoring them. Once they see that you're putting some distance between, the, between you and them, they'll want you. They'll chase you. They'll fight for you. They'll want an emotional response from you. So sometimes try the no-contact rule. And you'll see the narcissist fighting for you, chasing after you. The narcissist didn't chase you or fight for you because you never tried to be flexible around their lifestyle. The narcissist sometimes are attracted to people who are extremely flexible and don't make and, and people who don't make a big deal out of things. So, the narcissist wants you to work around their schedule when you're working with them. You, they need you to show them that you are an easy addition to their life. When the narcissist sees, when the narcissist sees that you are willing to go along with their plans, then they will want to keep you around. Again, you can be understanding of the narcissist negative traits if you want them to chase you or to fight for you so when you're not understanding of their negative traits then they will not chase you they will not fight for you the narcissist expects you to use positive reinforcement and to show compassion that way they will always chase you or fight for you but if you are not using positive reinforcement if you are not compassionate then they might just not chase you. They might not fight for you. They don't want you to criticize them or to blame them. Because that way it makes them become defensive. And they hate that. When you, put the, you, when you criticize the narcissists, they might decide not to fight for you. Some narcissists are drawn to partners who forgive easily. They, they want someone who will not hold a grudge or challenge them. A person with narcissistic personality disorder comes across as conceited, boastful, and pretentious. This person usually monopolizes most conversations. They act in a condescending manner towards others who they perceive to be inferior. You know, one thing about narcissists, they believe they are superior than others. They believe they are more important than others. They can't handle or accept any type of criticism. If you criticize a narcissist, they become very, very, very angry. If narcissists are criticized, they retaliate by acting out with rage or contempt. A narcissist, a person with narcissistic personality disorder, is obsessed with having the best of all things. They're obsessed with having the best clothes, the best cars, the best houses, the best office space, the best medical care, the best of everything. These narcissists have fragile egos. They have very fragile egos. They are very easily hurt. And they refuse to take responsibility for their flaws or failures. A narcissist, someone with narcissistic personality disorder, they want other people to believe that they possess natural leadership qualities. They, they, they are insecure people. They have this, as I mentioned, they have fragile egos. They are easily threatened by others' achievements. 
when you are in a conversation with a narcissist, with someone who has narcissistic personality disorder, they will constantly interrupt you. And they will interject their own opinions. They will, they will refuse to listen or accept anyone else's opinion. Now, one thing about this narcissistic personality disorder, it can cause the affected person to behave in socially distressing ways. A narcissist, someone with suffering from narcissistic personality disorder, they have it difficult. They go through difficult moments in relationships. It is very hard for them to maintain long-lasting relationships with others. A relationship with a narcissist is, in most cases, short-lived and very rocky. Narcissists, they are never, they don't feel happy or they don't enjoy being with other people. People who realize that they are old, people who have unmasked them, they don't enjoy that. They don't even desire friendships. A narcissist, they lack important social skills. Skills that enable them to form comfortable, normal relationship with others. So, because of this reason, they try to form friendships which never last. Why? Because they will be very uncomfortable in them. They become uncomfortable in those, in those relationships. They feel awkward and they end up in, it results in isolation. When a narcissist feels ignored by a friend, a colleague, a co-worker, they will cut that person out of their life entirely. You see, they have, they lack empathy. So they have this challenge forming these bonds with other people. Now, there are many causes of narcissistic personality disorder, but it is, it is believed that it is caused by a combination of both genetic and social factors. You know, sometimes children who are raised, uh, are, are raised in a way that they find themselves developing a serious personality disorder. And what I mean here is that if a parent showers their child with too much praise, then it can inflate the child's ego and they might end up developing this narcissistic personality disorder. Again, children who are abused can also lead to them developing this disorder. They'll feel that nobody cares about them and they will find, they'll start looking out for themselves in a way that makes them develop this disorder. Again, narcissistic personality disorder may be linked to genetics or psychobiology. And this is all about the connection between the brain and the behavior or the way, the way people think. Psychologically, uh, narcissists lack the ability to exhibit a self-image um, other than the one of exaggerated positive qualities. They are unable to cope with negative qualities in themselves. People with narcissistic personality disorder are excessively emotionally sensitive. Now, what are the symptoms of narcissistic personality disorder? We can summarize it under the name, it's all about me. You see, for a narcissist, it's all about them. It's all about me, 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 me. They insist on special favors and unquestioning compliance with their expectations. They only think about themselves most of the time. They talk about themselves too much, excessively. They need constant attention. They have this sense of entertainment. They exaggerate their talents. They exaggerate their achievements. They believe they're special. And they want others to believe they're special. They're very jealous people.
and they also believe others are jealous of them. They believe others also envy them. They are arrogant. They are always preoccupied with fantasies of success, power, brilliance, or beauty. They don't care about other people's feelings and needs. They have these unrealistic goals. They take advantage of others to get what they want. They have this exaggerated sense of self-importance. Relaxing around a narcissist is impossible. They exaggerate personal achievements while minimizing, minimizing other people's achievements. They are always complaining about what others do. They are liars. They believe they are more knowledgeable than others. Well, being in a relationship with a narcissist is not a piece of cake. It's a tough job. It's hell here on earth. If someone is in your life and this person is very egotistical, this person lacks empathy, this person is very selfish, self-centered, egocentric, if this person has an inflated sense of self, then that means that this person is a narcissist. It means you are in a relationship with a narcissist. Now, how do you disarm this narcissist in your life? Number one, be unpredictable. Be very, very unpredictable. You know, narcissists are very comfortable with you when they know what to expect. When they know your patterns. When they know how to, to handle you. When you're very predictable, it means they can easily manipulate you. They know that they can quickly get a reaction from you. So when you start doing something unpredictable, when you completely change your patterns, you confuse them. They no longer know how to play mind games on you. You throw them off their game. So you become unpredictable by changing how you react to their, their narcissistic behaviors. So, show them little or no reaction when they treat you in a narcissistic way. Number two way to disarm a narcissist is to say no when they ask for anything from you. Don't do things for them because narcissists expect, narcissists expect you to do things for them. They have this inflated sense of their own importance, which makes them feel entitled to special treatment from everyone, including you. So say no to their requests. Say no to their favors. They expect favors. They expect you to do uh, favors for them. When they ask you for favors, say no. That way they won't know how to react to that rejection. They'll be shocked. They'll, they might try to persuade you so that they can control you again, but... Be calm, cool, and collected. Stay firm and say no. Stick to your boundaries. Another way to disarm a narcissist is to remove all emotions from your reactions to them. Don't react. The narcissist wants to blow, want to blow you up so that they can make you look bad, so that they can play the victim. When they can't get attention from you, they'll do everything to get a negative emotional response from you so that they can ask and tell people and show the whole world that they are the victim. They'll show people your outbursts as evidence that you are a bad, mean, volatile person, that you are the enemy here, that you are the villain. So confuse these narcissists. Disarm them. By being calm, cool, and collected. Be neutral. In your face. In your facial outlook. Be neutral. Speak cool. Speak calm. Be, be composed. And stick to facts. Don't talk about how you feel. 
Don't even bring about the past emotional experience with that narcissist. So, you can disarm that narcissist by giving them just a yes or no answer to their many questions. Don't react. So, use your body language to show them that you are relaxed. Another way to disarm this narcissist is to play the grey rock method. Go grey rock with this narcissist. What I mean here is to be as useless and as boring as a grey rock. Be as dull as this grey rock. So, when you are boring, when you look useless, the narcissist will find you very unattractive. They'll be confused. They will leave you alone. Remember, narcissists get bored very easily. So don't show any physical expression. Just use a few words to respond. Be as boring as possible. That is one way to disarm this narcissist. So when you're dealing with a narcissist, know that the main aim is to control you, to manipulate you. So don't give them sensitive information. Hide information flowing to the narcissist. Because the narcissist is always trying to gather information about you so that they can control you later. They'll want to get secrets from you. They'll want to get past experiences from you. They want to get insecurities. They want to know where, what makes you insecure. So that they can use this to deal with you. So withhold information from the narcissist. Do as much as you can. Keep conversations very brief. Avoid personal topics. Don't talk about your childhood or your love life. Be careful the way you speak to the narcissist. Answer questions very carefully. So when you doubt something, just stop talking to the narcissist. Again, another way to disarm the narcissist is to walk away while they're talking. You just walk away. There's power in walking away from the narcissist. So when you're in a room talking with a narcissist and you feel comfortable, you don't like the way they are trying to manipulate you to play games with you, just walk out. Walk away. Remember, the narcissist's game is mostly, in most cases, verbal. So confuse them by not playing along. Just walk away. Leave them hanging. Walk away. Pretend that you've received a phone call, a fake phone call. Find an excuse during the conversation. Disengage. That is called self-care. If they start to yell at you, if they get verbally abusive, leave the room. Leave them. Walk away. Pretend you've received a phone call and walk away. So when you don't want to talk to the narcissist, they feel confused. So disarm them by cutting off all communication from them. Refuse to talk to them. Don't answer their calls. Don't answer their text messages. Don't interact with them. Go no contact. Remember, narcissists are liars. They lie to protect their image. They lie to control others. So, ask them many questions about their faulty logic. That way you disarm them. Again, you can shine the spotlight on someone else. Talk highly about someone else. Remind them about who they have to share credit with for a project or an assignment. So don't let them win. Narcissists love winning. So do your best. Shine. Choose success. That way you disarm them. When you beat the narcissist, they get shocked. 
they get confused. They are amused. They are surprised. So beat them up. Remember, narcissism they discourage competition by making others feel less important, less capable, less valuable, less skilled, less special. They believe they are unique, they are the best. So when you put the narcissist in their place by competing with them, by performing at your best, by taking some leadership role anywhere in the community, at work, college, school, when you do your best, they get confused. It means you've not let them win. That way you disarm them. Thank